when I mentioned that the uh, Second World War took five years, six years, depends on where you were. If you were in China or Japan, it probably took about um, maybe eight to nine years. Some people think it started in uh, 1931, so about 14 years. Um, mm -hmm. So there's, there's different perspectives on the uh, Second World War and how long it lasted, but we shall take 1939 to 1945. Um, so, and we mentioned that uh, the Second World War ended with the surrender of Japan with the nuclear uh, bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which incidentally were not the most uh, destructive um, attacks that were leveled. So the uh, firebombing of Tokyo in March 1945 is estimated to have killed more than 100,000 people. Um, but war, the Second World War ends in 1945. Now, one of the uh, things that happened, and so we'll talk about some of these um, terms, the end of the Second World War saw the development of the United Nations. If you have ever been to New York, um, ironically, <clears throat> kind of around the corner from Trump Tower, the United Nations uh, sits there. And so the United Nations became the successor to the League of Nations. Remember the League of Nations, uh, 1920, it ends in 1946. So the League of Nations is like a parliament of countries. It's like the Congress. So today there are 193 member states of the record. So countries that are independent are co and who are members are called member states of the record. Um, Kosovo is not part of it. Neither is um, Palestine. Palestine actually applied to join the League of, I mean, the United Nations. But so the United Nations is a successor. It has six uh, principal organs. The building that you see is a secretariat that also houses the UN General Assembly, one of the other organs, the um, Security Council, sort of in the basement, one of the other organs. It also houses the... Um, ECOSOC, Economic and Social Council. Um, so the uh, one, the, the trusteeship council was supposed to guide countries towards independence. And so it kind of meets once a year. It comprises of uh, the five permanent members of the UN Security Council, the US uh, Republic of China, People's Republic of China, not Republic of China, <clears throat> Russia or Russian Federation, Great Britain and France. So those are the members of the Trusteeship Council. They are also the permanent members of the United Nations. Uh, they are the ones that can authorize military action on a country. Uh, the one <clears throat> principal organ that is not in New York is the International Court of Justice. Note, International Court of Justice is not the International Criminal Court. Uh, but both of them are actually at the Hague in the Netherlands, but if you commit genocide, you will be taken to the International Criminal Court. If a country commits a thing that looks like genocide, like what uh, Israel has been doing, in the words of South Africa, not my words, um, then the International Court of Justice can arbitrate between countries or the major um, organs of the United Nations. So for example, um, I think it was UNICEF maybe that went to the ICJ to determine if the use of nuclear weapons is a good thing. <clears throat> uh, we'll talk about the Truman Doctrine, which was intended to uh, shore up uh, defenses in Turkey and um, Greece after the Second World War, the Marshall Plan, which was a whole bunch of money that was given to Europe to help them rebuild, uh, because uh, the US was like, when we let Europe on its own, it goes back into war. And by the way, communism might take, um, <clears throat> might take hold. Uh, the Cold War was that period of um, time between 1945 and 1991, when the world was divided between the communist, socialist, 
Soviet Union, its allies, and the U.S. Um, <clears throat> capitalist democratic nations and its allies, um, the West. Now, today we often, now you cannot say the third world because that is just a terrible thing to say. It's uh, very disrespectful. There used to be a third world. This is how the third world came about. So the first world was the developed countries, the US, the Western countries. The second world was the communist countries of East Europe. So if you think about East Germany, um, going East, Poland, Hungary, Romania, those countries were called the uh, second world. And the third world was the countries that were not aligned, so the independent African and other nations. Um, but so when we think about the uh, end of the Second World War, we sort of think about um, such momentous events like D-Day. Uh, we think about uh, major figures like um, Eisenhower, who was the supreme allied commander in Europe. Uh, General MacArthur coming back to uh, <coughs> the Philippines and, according to Americans, helping liberate it, according to Filipinos, um, was he coming to recolonize it? Philippine, uh, Philippines becomes independent in uh, 1946. Um, and of course you have, um, for example, Mount Suribachi, the major iconic images. Now, so the end of the Second World War, we actually see not only the end of fascism, remember we talked about the three visions of modernity, one of which was uh, capitalism, democratic capitalism, so that continued. But uh, supremacist nationalism, fascism, um, in Germany, in Italy, in Spain, well, in Spain it kind of lingered, and Japan comes to an end. Uh, but the other thing that we see is the independence of uh, former colonies. If you remember our discussion on colonization, um, about 38% of the world was colonized. Now, during the Second World War, a lot of these colonies uh, produced uh, troops who fought in the Second World War. So. Um, as a historian, sometimes I, I try to capture those older memories. And so sometimes I talk to older people who tell you stories of going to Burma. Like this really rural Kenyan person who fought in Burma and you're thinking, how did he even get there? Uh, but they were fighting in defense of uh, empire, especially the British Empire. But what the British Empire did not know is that these people then demand independence. And so uh, Sri Lanka, for example, becomes one of the countries that become independent, India, uh, Vietnam, Indochina, <clears throat> and um, so on. But so we, we see the end of the Second World War, the beginning of the end of colonialism, even though colonialism doesn't end until about 1990, so it takes another. But most of the colonized countries were independent by about 1965. Um, and so we actually see the former colonies doing some important things, like the uh, election of the first female prime minister in the world, was in Sri Lanka. So Sri Lanka is, <clears throat> if you look at a map of India, Sri Lanka is um, towards the bottom of... Um, and so this was a, a new period of independence, of um, the end of the war of reconstruction, uh, but it's also helpful to maybe reflect back briefly on the um, end of the Second World War, so major loss of life. <clears throat> so the First World War was uh, sort of considered or cast as the war to end all wars. Clearly that did not happen, and the Second World War actually had double the number of victims, so about uh, 60 million. Um, <clears throat> and so a lot of widespread destruction, the start of the nuclear age, um, atomic weapons, and so the, the question of whether in future we would have nuclear war, we still grapple with that question. Um, but also the founding of the uh, United Nations. So in 1945, there were about 45 countries, actually 51, that signed the um, Charter of the United Nations. Today there are 193 countries, so clearly they have almost uh, quadrupled. So the end of the Second World War actually saw the end of the old Eurocentric world order. <clears throat> 
um, and again you can see uh, the total deaths, 3 million civilians in Axis countries, uh, 35 million civilian deaths in allied countries, so for example, a, a lot of these um, <clears throat> are in countries like Russia, so we see about um, 27 million Russians dying. Um, the cost in materials in today's money was about one trillion. Um, and if you think about the cost in um, like the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, <clears throat> about another trillion. So, um, so if you actually consider the amounts today, it's about four trillion and for what? But so one of, as I mentioned, one of the uh, outcomes is the end of the uh, of Nazism <clears throat> and militarism. These were some of the major figures uh, during the Second World War. So Churchill, uh, Roosevelt, and um, and Stalin. Um, Roosevelt dies on April twelfth, so a few days ago, um, many years ago. And so the person who is actually at the uh, conclusion of the Second World War is uh, Harry Truman. And so there's a very interesting story told of Harry Truman. Um, the Manhattan Project was the one that uh, was a project that created the um, atomic weapons. And so Harry Truman, as the leader of the Senate, had tried to stop it. It was just like, why are we spending $2 billion and what are we making? And nobody could tell him until he was told by the president, we are making a weapon that could end the war. But so this is um, <clears throat> Harry Truman in 1945, during the signing of the Charter of the United Nations. Um, and so the idea is to build a better world. Um, yeah, to build a better world in which
sectas